Be quiet. Pure Loop 240 all-in-one water cooling system for your CPU. This is what I'm going to be showing you how to install on the AM4 socket today. And we also got some temperature testing. There will be some timestamps in the description below. If there's a certain part of the video you'd like to jump to, you're more than welcome to do so. There's some other links down there that may interest you. And don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff when you're way down to that there description box. Without wasting a lot of your time, let's flip you over and I'll show you how to get this thing installed on that AM4 socket. To get started on installing the Pure Loop 240mm all-in-one, we have everything laid out here that we need. We got the radiator, the tubes, and the pump head itself. We have the two fans. We have the four spacers and the four screws that hooks it to the motherboard. Also have the brackets here that will attach the pump head to the motherboard. We have the eight small screws here to connect the radiator to the case. If we ain't gonna go through the case, through the fans into the radiator. We have the longer screws here. If you want to go through the case, through the fans and then into the radiator, or you can use them just to attach the fans to the radiator. All right, the tools we got laid out here for this project. We have my number two Phillips and the extension bit, which both of them are magnetized. I have already installed this cooler once, so I'm gonna put my own thermal paste on it. I got a tube of MX5 here, and I do have my little spreader, which we'll get into that here in a little bit. But for right now, we need to get the motherboard over here and get it prepped for the installation. So let me move all this stuff out of the way and we'll get the motherboard over here. All right, guys, here we go. We've got the motherboard over here. I've already got the motherboard prepped. I got the CPU installed and I do have the NVMe already installed, which really don't matter at this point. And if you've got a CPU fan already installed, you will have to uninstall it. In this case, it's like if you're building new and you don't have a CPU fan already installed, you have to take these brackets off which is pretty simple you got two screws to hold each bracket on so you just have to take the screws out remove the plastic brackets here i would recommend holding on to these plastic brackets and the screws because you never know what your cpu cooling needs is going to be in the future and there is some aftermarket coolers and aios that will actually take advantage of these brackets so we definitely want to keep a hold of them uh, I've seen my build videos and the extra components I usually keep inside the motherboard box just for easy storage and everything's put in one spot that way you can find it later on if need be. I'll take them off. Alright guys, before we put the brackets on, we're going to go ahead and install our thermal paste here. Like I said, it doesn't use the cooler, so I'm going to be putting some MX5 uh, thermal compound here today. There is different schools of thought on this process. Uh, some people say you put a drop in the middle, let the heat sink spread it out for you me personally i like to spread mine out i'm old school but that way if i do put too much on it i can take off the excess and by spreading it out i also know that i get good complete coverage of the cpu so i'll go ahead and start spreading it out here and uh i'll be back when i get done spreading it out all right now since i got my thermal paste put on that thing it's pretty good application there whenever installing the aio this 240 it does use the back plate that comes on your am4 motherboard so we don't have to worry about using the back plate that comes with the CPU cooler. That's only if you're going to be using Intel systems. All right, we've got the little brackets here. And when you put these brackets on, which we will put the spacers underneath though, but when you put the brackets on, you want to make sure that the little lip is actually pointing in towards the CPU. So let's go ahead and get the little spacer put on here. All right, then you set your bracket on top of it. And the brackets are labeled. I don't know if you can see that on, on the video or not. It does say AM4 right there in the corners of them. Kind of point to which holes you need to use. Since it's sitting there pretty nice, we'll just go ahead and get this screw started. You just want to get it started just a little bit, just enough to hold. Then we'll jump over here and we'll do the other one, just like so. And since we've already got the other one started, we'll tighten this one down. And you just want to snug these down. They don't need to be real tight. You ain't stealing against water or air or anything. Just wrist tight. We'll get the other one put on here on the other side. It goes on the exact same way as the other side does. All right, now it's time for the pump head. And, uh, and the way they actually got this set up, it's pretty nice. I do like the way the screws is already mounted into the pump head, so you don't have to worry too much about that. When installing this, but you want your B quad to be upright, so you're going to need your tubes next to your ram sticks, or next to your ram slots. But to install, just put down over top of the bracket where the holes is. We'll get this one over here started. There we go. We'll come up here to this one. We'll get this one here started. And we'll just go back and forth here a little bit. You know, a couple of turns on each one. We don't want to over tighten one side before getting the other side tightened all the way down. There's back and forth, a couple of turns each. You know, you want to try to keep even pressure on this as much as possible. 
and they're just like the bracket screws you know just about wrist tight you don't want to really crank on them too hard because you don't want to put too much pressure on a cpu there we go i think that'd be plenty all right guys and to do the wiring here you got two cables you got a three pin fan header here that goes to the block head that covers up the cpu that that don't run the pump the only thing that is used for is for the leds that light up on the head head unit and then over here we have another cable this does operate the pump so you definitely want to make sure you have this plugged into the fan header the cpu fan header and it is and it is also a three pin fan header we're going to go up here to this little gray notch up here it says cpu fan right there above it says cpu fan they are notched you line up your pins with the notch you slide it down on make sure that's for the one that goes to the pump the other cable here that runs off your head unit that covers up the cpu you can plug that into any any fan splitter any fan control boxes you have you plug this into just power any fan header on the motherboard just enough to give it power to be able to light up that be quiet the white light around the be quiet me personally i'm just going to take it up here where it says cpu optional and we're going to slide it over there okay we'll take care of them cables once we actually get it into the case let me get reset up here and we'll talk about the fans and how to install them and put this thing in a case now since we got to build this for long now we're ready to install our fans and the radiator into it there's different schools of thought on this as well there's different ways you can do it first thing is you need to figure out if you're going to be putting your radiator in front of your case like this or if you're going to be going with a top mount solution like this me personally in this in this particular build i will be mount mine at the top when installing your fans on your radiator you always want to keep in mind with your fans they suck air in where there ain't no brackets and they blow air out where the mount is holding the motor in place so basically if you're going to be putting it on the front of your case you need to put them with the brackets facing the inside of the case in my situation today i'm going to be using them as an exhaust so the brackets for the housing that holds the motor in place will be up towards the top and also when you're installing your radiator since i'm going to go with top mount you need to figure out if you want to sandwich your fans between the radiator and the case like this and if you want to do that you can use just these long screws and it'll go down through the case down through the fan and into the radiator but because of the heat sinks on my motherboard back there i can't do it this way but do it that way it's going to, the radiator will be hitting the heat sinks i'm going to have to install my fans on the bottom of the radiator like so with the eight screws and then i'm going to, have to put the eight screws in to hold the radiator to the case so let's go ahead and we'll get the fans mounted to the radiator and the orientation that we need here for this build and since the radiator is going to be going like this i also want to keep in mind the fans are going to be going like this i want to keep my cables from my fan towards back side of the radiator so it's going to be something like this that way i can run my cables from my fans out the back and into my splitter that i'm going to be using so in my situation today i need to take my long screws and connect my fan to the bottom part of the radiator go ahead and snug these two down with these two already started since the caddy corner from each other they should hold it in a spot where it needs to be then we can put the other two screws in this fan all right now since we got all four in there we'll just go ahead and tighten these down just snug them down wrist tight you don't need to over tighten these you don't want to strip out the holes in your radiator or nothing like that and we'll go ahead and get this second fan put on as well all right we got that put on and we're going to go ahead and run the cables for fans out the hole in the back of the case to the back of the motherboard here now since we've got the ran out the back we'll pull out the excess while we hold the radiator up in spot here the radiator inside the case we need to take the eight short screws here these very little short screws that they give you and you need to screw the radiator to the case or the case to the radiator whichever way you want to look at it and just like your fans you have eight of these as well once you get them all started, you need to go back around and just tighten them down a little bit. You just need these snug. You don't need these real tight, guys. You don't want to strip out the screw heads inside the radiator. You don't want to strip out the Phillips head on top of the screw. You know, just like everything else, you know, just about rich wrist tight. All right, there we go. I think it looks pretty good like that, don't you? That hose is in pretty good shape. As far as hooking up the fan cables on the back, right, here's the two fan cables. Well, I ran them out of the back and depending on your build is how you're going to hook up these fan cables you may want to just hook them straight into the motherboard uh, me personally or within this build because I do have three other fans in the build 
and you also have the wire for the blockhead for that LED plus you have the three pin fan connector for the for the pump itself actually got a splitter here a three-way splitter and also got another fan splitter here that's a four-way splitter so now we just need to hook them all up um in the beginning i showed you how to hook them into your motherboard it's basically the same thing just depends on your uh your setup and how many fans you got how many splitters you need and whatnot it's going to all depend on how you're going to actually hook up your fan connectors let me get reset up here and we'll do some temperature testing and we'll see how this thing actually performs on the 5800x that's in this system all right now i'll show you how to install this on the on the am4 platform let's jump over here and i'll show you what components make up today's test bench to start out with we have the amd ryzen 7 5800x cpu we're going to be using the gigabyte b550 Oris pro motherboard we have g skills ripped all 5 series 16 gigs 2 8 gig sticks around 3600 megahertz Storage, we have the silicon power 512 gigabyte nvme m.2 gen 3 ssd to power the whole system we have the ebga 650 gq which is an 80 plus gold modular power supply with the graphics in the system today we have the gigabyte radio and rx 5600 xt wind force cord and yes i am aware that uh, 5800 could handle a lot better gpu but this is what i got on hand so this is what i'm using as long as i have video out i'm good with today's testing and for the case we do have the metallic gear near g mid tire atx tempered glass case this is powered by fantex while we're talking about the case and today's testing i did leave the stock fans in the front I put an extra 120 millimeter in the back and both of the radiators I tested with today was put in the top as an exhaust. As far as the as far as the coolers go that we tested today, we have the Be Quiet Pure Loop 240 millimeter all in one cooling system. And I had to have something to put this up against, so about the best thing I had to put it against is the Arago AT240 240mm CPU liquid cooler. They both run for about $100, but right now the Pure Loop is out of stock. All right, I'll show you how to install this on the A4 socket. We ran down through the components that make up today's test bed. All the components in today's system was ran in stock besides the RAM. I did go in and enable XMP profile. I did no overclocking on the CPU. This is the outbox settings for the CPU. This is why I said it really didn't matter what graphics card I had in the system. As long as I had a video out, it's the main thing I was really concerned with. The way I do my testing, I run Cinebench R23 for a half hour stress test. I run three different times back to back. Now them three runs, I take them and divide them by three, which gives me the average. We're looking at the average temperature and we're looking at the max temperature. Both coolers kept the CPU at about 30 degrees Celsius while idling on the desktop, which is pretty expected. Speaking of the numbers, let's flip you over and we'll see how these 240 all in one compare to each other. All right, here we go. We have the average temperature in orange. We have the max temperatures in black. We have the Ergo AT240. It's averaging about 80.6 degrees. The max temperature was 82.6. The Pure Loop 240. The average was about 80.1, and the max was about 84.1. Looking at them numbers, these these do compare pretty well to each other. You know, there is one or two degree difference, but we're going to mark that up to uh, margin of error. And of course, depending on the case that you use, you may be able to get better temperature out of yours if you had a little bit better airflow in your case or whatnot. Like I said, when I ran down through the components, I did add a 120 for exhaust in the back. My radiator was on top with the fans on the inside as an exhaust, and I have the two 120 pre-installed in this case in the front for intake. That so was a little bit of a negative pressure setup. But depending on your case and the way your airflow is in your case, you may actually do a little bit better than what I did. These are the numbers I got today. I think it's pretty well, I think it's a pretty good fit for something like the 5800X. If you'd like to see a video of me putting the test bench together, I'll put a link to that up there for you. I also have an unboxing and overview of this cooler on the channel. I'll put that up there for you as well if you'd like to go check it out. There will also be links in the description below for both of these coolers if you'd like to have a little bit more information on them. There's some other links down there that may interest you. And don't forget to do all that fun YouTube stuff on your way out of here. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.